Okay. Well, welcome, folk. I'm sure that there'll be others that'll uh, bop in here, you know, in a couple of minutes, and that's fine. Uh, tonight, uh, we have a wonderful webinar with two presenters, David Lima and CJ Cook. Uh, I'll let them introduce themselves in just a minute. And uh, tonight, we're going to be talking about tantalizing testimony, you know, um, some some tips, some some real positive ways of presenting your testimony when you um, go into the state house for a hearing in one of these long and uh, exciting committee meetings. I'm Reverend Joan Van Diesler, and I'm the director of Unitarian Universalist Justice Ohio. Let me ask David to introduce himself and then CJ, and then I'll start with a little centering. David, yeah. please speak. Yeah, uh, Dave Lima, um, uh, he, him, his um, pronouns, and uh, I am a member of the leadership team of Surge Showing Up for Racial Justice, the Northeast Ohio chapter, and involved in a variety of policing issues uh, and uh, protesting issues uh, around uh, this particular area. Uh, and uh, I'll pass it to CJ. Hi, I'm CJ Cook, she, her, and um, I am a member of the Great Circle Fellowship in Newark, which is a Unitarian Universalist covenant community. I'm also the co uh, Central Ohio Chair of the Poor People's Campaign. I also belong to UUJO, and I belong to, I belong to a lot of things, League of Women Voters, and so I've been really interested in testifying. And I have just recently started doing that. And I find that a good way to uh, get my, my message across to our legislatures. Wonderful, so. wonderful. Well, let me do a little bit of centering and then I'll turn it over to you guys and your wonderful slideshow. I wanna to share tonight one of my favorite little stories and it is by Rabbi Edwin Friedman. And the rabbi says, on the third day of creation, just before all forms of life were about to multiply, the Holy One said to the creatures, I see that what some of you treasure most is survival, while what others yearn for most is adventure. So I will give each of you a choice. If what you want most is stability, then I will give you the power to regenerate any part you lose, but you must stay rooted where you grow. And if on the other hand, you prefer mobility and opportunity and change, you also may have your wish, but you will be much more at risk. For then I will not give you the ability to regain your previous form. Now, those that chose stability, we call trees. And those that chose mobility and opportunity and risk became animals. And this leads directly to us here today, for we are a lovely collection of risk-taking, changing, and evolving animals. Welcome. David, CJ. Great. Thank you so much, uh, Joan. Um, uh, before we get started, uh, I put my uh, email address in the chat. I think it was the first um, um, item in the chat uh, tonight. And feel free to contact me if you have any questions. Uh, if uh, you've missed something and you want to get hooked up with uh, some of the materials that we have, I'd be happy to uh, respond. So feel free uh, to do that. Um, and also, I wanted to let you know that um, uh, with all of the stuff that we're going over here, you, do, you don't really have to uh, capture all of it uh, in one sitting. At the very end, we're going to have uh, uh, a slide that uh, shows you uh, or provides you with information concerning the personal testimony toolkit that UUJO has put together along with the talking points toolkit that relates to the three uh, legislative bills that we're going to be talking about this evening. So 
with that, um, we can uh, begin our little slideshow and um, we'll, uh, here we go. So uh, we, we've decided to jazz it up a bit and uh, call it tantalizing testimony. I'm not sure how tantalizing it will be, but we'll give it a whirl. Uh, that, so there are two uh, 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 important things uh, to remember uh, uh, when you're uh, submitting testimony. Um, in uh, Testimony can be either written or in person. And we're gonna talk about each of those separately, but uh, in either case, uh, your testimony needs to be submitted in PDF format and accompanied by a witness information form. And unfortunately, the House and the Senate in Ohio have two different forms. Uh, so uh, we want to uh, provide you, though, with a link uh, or uh, some information on the next slide um, that would help you to uh, get to those forms. Uh, the Senate form, uh, here we go. I don't think they can see that. Okay. Um, well, there is a, uh, a Senate form. Um, yeah, I, I don't think we're able to do that. Uh, if you go to the Ohio Senate and uh, basically uh, Google the Ohio Senate uh, and their um, witness information form, it will come up and you can uh, then um, download that form uh, and fill it out. The same, here we go, what do we have there? I don't know. Anyway, if you just go to the House and the Senate and you go to the committee and then they will have it about testimony. Right. And we're, we're looking at two particular uh, committees. Uh, in the Senate, we're looking at, uh, for these, uh, and this applies to the particular uh, 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 bills that we're concerned about, the anti-protest bills. In the Senate, um, um, it is uh, House, House, or Senate Bill 41, and uh, here is Joan is providing you with the House Witness Information Form and how to get it. And then I think she's going to also put in the chat uh, the link uh, to the uh, Senate form. They are different. Uh, they ask for basically the same information, but they are different. Um, so let's go on to the next slide. And they want it in PDF format. They That's right. That and the witness statement in PDF format. So got to pay attention to how they want it. Exactly. So uh, if you're providing written, uh, written testimony, it's important and, and don't plan uh, to be there in person. You'll need to email it to the committee chairs along with the witness information form, no later than 24 hours in advance of the committee meeting start time. And unfortunately, they oftentimes provide those, notice, uh, those uh, notices uh, very late. Uh, and so it's important to have your, uh, your testimony all ready to go when you get notification uh, that they're uh, meeting. Uh, we have some contact information uh, that we also want to provide you. Um, if you're, um, uh, if you want to go to the next slide. Here we go. So if you're sending testimony or, uh, or even uh, uh, presenting in person, uh, you do need to uh, send it uh, in the House to the Criminal Justice Committee at OhioHouse.com. 
if you're sending testimony or going to be in person, you would say, send it to kate.millen at ohiosenate.gov. Uh, she is the aide to um, Senator Manning. Uh, those are the, um, um, it is more difficult to find and uh, we will have a link as Joan pointed out. If you're providing uh, in-person testimony, there are a couple of uh, rules to follow. First of all, plan to arrive early. I usually get down there an hour before the uh, committee is um, uh, set to convene. Uh, and then I can either park in the State House garage or in the Columbus Commons parking garage, which is approximately a five minute walk to the State House. I prefer the um, um, Columbus Commons parking garage simply because it's very large and you get up on the second or third floor, you're real close to the elevator uh, and uh, it, it, it is convenient and it's uh, uh, not costly. Um, when you get to the State House, after you pass through security, uh, there's usually a trooper there uh, uh, after security, and you can ask the trooper for directions to the committee room uh, that um, you have received uh, in advance. The, uh, they, they publish where they're going to be. Uh, once arriving at the committee hearing room, uh, procedures and the order of testimony will be announced by the committee chair. Sometimes you can sit in the committee room, uh, depends on the number of people, and sometimes you sit in an adjacent room uh, and then uh, they call you in when it is time for you to testify. Uh, there's usually a television in there uh, that shows, <clears throat> that is showing the testimony as it occurs. So the next slide is testifying um, in person and some guidelines uh, to follow. And it's very important uh, to, to do it respectfully without theatrics from a personal perspective. This is how the, how the legislation will affect you and or your organization if you're representing an organization. Your testimony should be short and to the point and definitely no longer than five minutes and less if possible. And you should include examples to support your position, how this legislation uh, will affect you. And following <clears throat> your testimony, committee members may ask you questions. Uh, and um, um, my experience is that uh, occasionally they'll do that, but not frequently. So the format uh, for uh, written or uh, in-person testimony is to address the chair, the vice chair, the ranking member, and the committee members. Identify yourself, where you live, and your organizational affiliation if you're representing that organization. And then present your testimony with your closing support or opposition to the proposed legislation. And I'm going to um, read a testimony that I have provided uh, on House Bill 109. Uh, and uh, because I, I put my um, uh, email address in the chat, uh, if you would like me to send you the full copy of my testimony, I have two of them that I can send to you uh, related to House Bill 109 and House Bill 22. And if you uh, would like that, uh, I like a copy of that uh, for your review, I'd be ha more than happy to send it to you. But, it, uh, but the testimony goes something like this. Chair LeRae, 
Vice Chair Swearingen, Ranking Member Leland, committee members. I appreciate the opportunity to testify today on House Bill 109, a bill to amend certain sections of the revised code to increase penalties for certain assault, vandalism, and riot offenses, and to allow peace officers to bring civil suits against a person uh, participating in a riot. My name is Dave Lima. I'm a resident of Mentor, Ohio, and I'm a member of the leadership team of Showing Up for Justice, uh, Showing Up for Racial Justice, Northeast Ohio chapter. And then I go on to the body of my uh, comments. House, and I'll just give you a, a, a sentence or two on that. House Bill 109, if passed, will have a chilling effect on peaceful protesting. I participate in peaceful protests and my organization, Surge, from time to time, sponsors and co-sponsors such events. I am concerned about the many provisions of this bill, but will focus on just one, the liability and penalties proposed for organizations who sponsor protests. So then I go on with a, a variety of examples uh, of how that uh, how the bill will affect me and my organization, and then um, at the at the very end, I close with House Bill 109 threatens organizations like Surge with unwarranted liability and outlandish penalties. I and Surge urge the rejection of House Bill 109. So, so feel free uh, to contact me if you'd like the full text and uh, also the text of uh, my testimony that I provided uh, on House Bill uh, 22. So now we want to go to uh, our next slide. Yeah, we uh, talk about the facts like including facts. Because yeah, uh, you, you can, uh, you could include facts if you have them, but when you're um, uh, providing in-person testimony, you don't have to uh, adhere strictly to the uh, written testimony that you provided. Uh, and um, so um, facts are important, uh, but examples of how this legislation is going to affect you and your organization is uh, more critical. And you can make your written testimony longer than your than your oral testimony and you can absolutely absolutely great. And that's that's Dave's Gmail. Yeah so so what I wanted to do now is to shift to these particular bills. And I have a little bit of a summary here uh, that I think uh, just kind of uh, serves as um, uh, a kind of an, an overview of, of these three bills. The basic issue with pro the proposed legislation, which is House Bill 22, House Bill 109, and Senate Bill 41, is the chilling effect it will have on peaceful protesting. Additionally, we believe it violates our First Amendment speech and assembly rights and our right to petition our government for redress of grievances. The overly broad language and increased penalties for laws that already exist are unnecessary and overly punitive. Historically, we have engaged in peaceful protesting to correct existing injustices, moving us to a more perfect union. We want this fundamental right to exist now and in the future. A healthy, vibrant democracy demands it. And as I mentioned uh, be, uh, previously, we will have um, the um, uh, 
uh, personal testimony toolkit available for you, which, uh, which uh, includes written and in-person details, uh, and also the talking points toolkit, which includes details and analysis of these bills. But now let's go to House Bill 22. So House Bill 22 is basically titled Obstruction of Justice. The bill was passed out of the House Criminal Justice Committee to the full House where it passed and was sent to the Senate. The bill expands the penalties, fines and prison time for obstructing justice, which includes diverting and distracting an officer from their duty and for the failure to follow a lawful order. House Bill 109. Well, it, Go let's ahead. talk about that distracting and diverting an officer and failure to follow an order. Distracting and that's part of that kind of vague language. What does that mean, distracting and diverting an officer? Joan had, a, had a, some theater where they were blowing bubbles. Would that be distracting an officer? If you go up and talk to the officer, is that distracting an officer? Um, if you ask the officer to help you with something, is that diverting an officer? If you tell them, you know, what does that mean? Distracting and diverting or failure to follow a lawful order. You know, when the, when the police, you have a big crowd and you can't get out of the street and they tell you to get out of the street, but there's nowhere to go, is that? failure to follow a lawful order, so. Right, and that's, uh, and, and I think what uh, Caroline is saying is that uh, the language is overly broad and it's vague. And, uh, you know, if an officer decides that you're distracting him or her, then uh, they, uh, they can arrest you. And you might not be found guilty in a court of law, but you're going to be detained, uh, you're going to be hassled. Uh, and so they're, they're, again, this is that the attempt to throw into the, the mix here, uh, all of these um, uh, hassling kinds of things that serve to have a chilling effect on, the, on protesting, peaceful protesting. And, and that's, uh, that we, we believe is the primary reason for uh, these bills uh, to, to cut down and to limit uh, our ability to public witness uh, and to um, address some of the injustices uh, that uh, we see. So House Bill 109, riot, vandalism, and uh, organizational liability. Uh, this bill would create higher fines and prison time for individuals and organizations supporting a protest where first responders are harassed, intimidated, or injured. Also included are higher fines and prison time for blocking streets and sidewalks and vandalism to government property, statutes and, and cemeteries. Should violence occur, organizations sponsoring or providing material support would be held responsible and assessed triple the damages that would occur to an individual. Leaders of those organizations could be charged with corrupt activity and if convicted, fined and imprisoned. The definition of a riot is four or more persons engaged in disorderly conduct. I think we have down there five or more, but it's actually four or more. Um, language has been uh, changed from knowingly to recklessly lowering the bar for, uh, oh, it is, it is five? Well, somebody, <laughs> okay. Oh, the offender and four others. Yes, okay. Very good. <laughs> Thanks, Joan. Um, 
uh, and um, the, uh, the, the, the language change is very significant because it's a much harder thing for a prosecutor to prove that you've knowingly done these things to recklessly doing them. So it has lowered the bar for convictions uh, should this uh, House Bill 109 become law. Caroline, did you wanna add anything to that? Well, I'm just thinking of like the Black Lives Matter protests, you know, they're, the people who organize those have very little control over the people on the street or how many people show up and whether they're gonna block streets and sidewalks. You know, if you have a huge crowd, there may be no choice but to block some streets and sidewalks. Um, and if somebody commits vandalism, you may not know that person or have anything to do with that person. And yet you could be charged with corrupt activity and fined or imprisoned. Um, and so it really is, is hard on organizations. Right, and it brings to mind the April 30th uh, Black Lives Matter uh, protest that was organized uh, in Cleveland uh, where uh, there was um, um, violence that occurred uh, and some of the individuals set a, a police car on fire and uh, broke, broke windows in buildings in that instance, uh, in, in that, uh, that particular uh, rally and protest, uh, Black Lives Matter Cleveland, uh, who organized it, could have been held responsible and their leaders uh, fined and imprisoned. And we already have we already have laws that say that if you commit vandalism, you're charged. You know the person the person who does the vandalism or who you know is is doing that should be held accountable, but not the organization that sponsored it, because you have no control over who shows up. That's right. And it also brings uh, to mind uh, the, the potential for out, uh, outliers, uh, individuals who do want to uh, disrupt and create violence, who are not members of that organization and have no interest in the in whatever the protest is is uh, uh, focusing on uh, can come and um, put in jeopardy uh, the organization and leaders of that organization. And even harassing harassing the police or intimidating the police. You know what does that mean? And you know other people can be involved. You have no control over what people do at, at a protest, especially a big one. So let's move on to the next slide, which is Senate Bill 41. Uh, and uh, this uh, is uh, called a restitution uh, bill, and it would require the cost of policing an event if violence occurs, as well as payment for damages for any vandalism that occurs. Uh, agencies and law enforcement uh, could seek reimbursement for the cost incurred in responding to potential serious threats uh, to public safety. So if, uh, if there appears to be a threat to, uh, to uh, public safety and the SWAT team is called in, uh, all of the costs of those SWAT, uh, SWAT team members, all of the equipment could be assessed uh, to uh, the organization. Anything else about, okay. So um, we have, uh, and uh, in order to um, uh, help you with um, more details about all of what we've talked about this evening, is that there is a talking point toolkit and personal testimony toolkit that uh, UUJO has put together. Uh, and um, uh, Joan is saying that uh, the organization can be, oh yeah, she's talking about um, uh, the uh, House Bill or Senate Bill 41. Um, but uh, UUJO, our voices together, would be the place to go to uh, access uh, these two uh, 
uh, very uh, important uh, uh, pieces of uh, information that you can use in preparing your either written testimony or your in-person testimony. And uh, also, um, um, as uh, uh, there are other, there's other information that uh, you're, uh, you're going to be able to uh, access uh, by contacting UUJO. It's got the legislative. Can you see that slide now? Uh, you need to make it. We can see it, but it needs to be a little bit bigger. Um, I don't know if I can make it any, but it's you can't really read it, but this is the UUJO website. Yeah, and I think uh, Joan just put in the chat uh, the uh, um, the uh, uujo.org slash take action our yeah. voices together pro democracy action and that's what you can uh, you can use that to uh, access uh, that information and it has upcoming events and uh, all kinds of information on the uujo site yeah, so now why don't we open it up to any questions that uh, people might have? Let's see, let's get my hand up here. Hi, Lindsay. Hi, yeah. Uh, this is Lindsay. I'm wondering, and maybe you um, said this before, are you going to make these slides available yeah, after the webinar? She's going to send them out. Okay, great. Thank you. Tomorrow, she said she'd try to send it to everybody who was here. Good. So I have a question. Sure, go ahead. So actually tomorrow I'm going to be testifying before the... Uh, redistricting commission and mm. I, I know cj i uh i know you 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 gave testimony and um and uh i was wondering if anybody has anything that hasn't been brought up or something that needs to be restressed uh that i could mention in my testimony tomorrow that you can think of opening that up for people I have some things to talk about, but I just wondering if anybody had anything else to, to add. So you can think about it and get back to me. Uh, yeah, well, I, I, I just watched the uh, um, video or uh, the, uh, of the Cleveland uh, testimony. And one of the things that was a recurring theme was the um, uh, inaccessibility of these uh, venues. Um, and um, and the scheduling, the time scheduling. And so the suggestion was that uh, uh, venues be selected that are easy to get to, have plenty of parking, uh, and that they occur also in the evening uh, as opposed to 10 o'clock in the morning when so many people can't uh, attend. I also was reading some critique of the testimonies from uh, some folk um, with the with the state house, and they heard a lot of people saying, "Well, where are the Republicans? Uh, where are the members of the commission, and why aren't they here?" That seemed to also be a very common statement in the testimony. But some of the folk at the state house were saying. You know, we, we already know that they're not showing up. So talk more about how your district is makes no sense, how you don't have the same representative as your neighbor, uh, or how your district includes people that have nothing in common with you and your neighborhood and your issues, and try to lay that um, more emphasis on that kind of testimony as opposed to talking about who isn't there. Right, because so, so instead of- They're not uh, gonna show up, they're not gonna show up, yeah. Right, 
So instead of talking about the process, to talk about some more substance. Yeah. Yeah. That's that was the critique they said. Yeah, you don't you don't want to go about criticizing them at this, you know. I had somebody who got up, got up there. She happens to be a friend, and she says, "Some of you aren't wearing masks," and I feel insulted. And I thought, "Oh, yeah. no, no, don't do that," you know. Um, I I think pointing out that that it makes people that people don't vote if they feel their vote won't have any point in a gerrymandered Republican or gerrymandered Democratic district. If you're a Republican in a Democratic district, you're not gonna vote. Why, why bother? You know that the Democrat's gonna win. Or if you're re a Democrat in a Republican gerrymandered district, why vote? You know that that Republican, or why run for office? We, we had one of the people that ran for office that I know from from uh, my district. And he got up and told about what it was like to run for office, that the Republican candidate never showed up ever. The League of Women Voters offered them a chance to debate him and they never showed up. So in their view, it, he won't have, have it if, if both candidates don't show up. So he never had a chance to do that. And it, it stifles democracy. Um, so, and if you, if you believe in democracy, you know, we don't want that. <laughs> yeah. And I just wanted to add as well that just like David had mentioned in the beginning, Dave Lima had mentioned that the times for these redistricting meetings were off. It's the same with these bills. You know, once they come out of committee, things could move along very quickly. So if you have your written testimony prepared and you plan on testifying in person, be prepared for changes because that's another little trick they like to play down there at the state house is make it not so accessible for people. So you've got to kind of really keep your eye out on the day and time of the bill in particular you want to testify for. Yes, good point, uh, Julie. Uh, doing that in advance, I. Uh, the the uh, testimony that I had was all ready to go. As soon as I saw, I got a, a notice uh, from uh, uh, Joan uh, or from Kristen at UUJO. Hey, uh, they're meeting uh, on Thursday at 11 o'clock. And it was, uh, I don't know what time it was, but I had like uh, two hours uh, to meet the 24 hour deadline but I had it all ready to go. I even had my witness testimony form all ready to go. Uh, and so I just clicked on it and uh, I made the deadline. And that's wonderful because, you know, there's so many people that are working and this isn't necessarily accessible for people to testify in person. So it's really important that the people do show up that are available to testify in person and are prepared. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yep. And I might say, even though they say you got to have it in 24 hours in advance, if they have messed up and are changing the dates and the times and the rooms at the last minute, like they did on that one, that last one we testified with David, um, you can you can say, hey, you're the ones that changed the date too late for me to get my 20. Uh, notice here. So I, I am submitting this late and I'm going to be there and I expect to testify. Yeah, they, they took some late they took um, at the redistricting. They asked people to fill it out there and, and then fill out the witness statement there. And they allowed right. to so, right. so I think the, the point is uh, don't be discouraged and uh, don't uh, not do it simply because you may have missed what uh, artificial deadline that they have set. I got to testify once when they didn't even receive my witness slip or testimony in advance, although I sent it, um, but somebody just messed up their email. But they allowed me then to testify anyway, because mm -hmm. I stood up and said, hey, I sent my stuff in, I need to testify. <laughs> and they allowed it. Yes. And I think the written testimony is good too. I mean, when they get a lot of written testimony, even if you can't go in person, you know, they see there's a lot of people 
opposing this bill? We had 102 written opposition statements for House Bill 22. I, I, I wrote one for the um, anti-vax bill. Um, and I made a mistake. I talked about masks in there, and you should stick to the point. But I talked about the vaccine and the masks, and I shouldn't have done that. But but um, that was my first testimony <laughs> testifying. But um, I, I watched it, and it was really interesting to see the different people and and how you know if I would have been on the committee, how I might have responded to them. So it's good to watch those things. Lindsay, you have your hand up. I did. Um, I, I got on this webinar tonight because I wanted to pick up some tips that might be appropriate for the, uh, the redistricting commission hearing tomorrow in Mansfield. And um, were people submitting written testimonies to those, if you watch them on, I don't know, how did you watch the, the, the presentations before? Were, were people submitting a written one and then they would also get up and- You were supposed to submit your written testimony and the witness statement ahead of time to-, uh, to Stella Shaw? Yeah. But if you didn't, they still let people test testify. Yeah, yeah, in Cleveland, um, they um, um, Senator Sykes, I think, um, was chairing the Cleveland. And uh, so at the end of uh, the testimonies that had and the written um, witness forms had been submitted, he said, is there anyone else who wants to testify? And so people would come up and there were like four or five people who hadn't done that and he allowed them to testify. And when I came into the room, we were early and the lady asked me my name and had I already submitted it, otherwise she would have given me a witness form ahead of right. time. Right, I, yeah. I, the, the I say just go and show up because they give out witness forms to fill out there and it's mm -hmm. really important that you go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so there are uh, witness forms that you can fill out at, at, when you get there. Uh, they were there at Dayton um, and uh, and Senator Sykes is very good about asking at the very end if anybody else wants to speak, to speak. Yes. And I don't, I think a lot of those people who spoke at the end didn't submit uh, any written testimony. Right. You don't have to submit written testimony for the for these hearings. Right, right. It's interesting. Um, Hottinger, who is our senator from my district, showed up as the representative or I can't remember which Republican, but he showed up as the representative for that one. So I thought that was good, you know, because he knows our district and it was people from our district who were talking there. I, I plan to follow up with a, a note, an email to him saying, I'm glad you showed up to listen to our testimony and thank you for that. And, uh, so I think it's important to stay on good terms with these people. But don't let them intimidate you. Because there are some, especially when you go into committee hearings, mm -hmm. and you will, you will soon find the, the, the offenders who love to intimidate witnesses because they don't want them. They don't want witnesses taking up their time, right? Uh, don't let them intimidate you, but and don't let them get you mad, because mm -hmm. then you look. Yes, <laughs> we've David and I have seen a couple of these, because then uh, they can dismiss anything you say, if you um, you know go go off the cuff or, or insult them or you know say things that are just um, you know totally angry. They can just then dismiss everything else you've said. So you have to be patient, you have to breathe, <sighs> you know, even if their questions are stupid and intimidating, you can't say, boy, that's stupid and intimidating. Mm -hmm. You just have to swallow it and say, well, let me answer that as best I can from my point of view, you know, and move on. But they will try. 
because there are a few of them that really don't want to hear you but they got yeah i noticed that when they were they were testifying on the anti-vax bill yeah yeah there were the questions sometimes got and they cut a lot before everybody could finish testifying so i don't believe that day everybody had a chance to give their testimony on the anti-vax bill they cut it off whenever they feel like it and uh, those questions uh, that Joan was referring to uh, oftentimes come from the committee member who actually sponsored the legislation uh, because they get somewhat, you know, when you're talking about their legislation and that it's uh, not a good deal, uh, they get defensive. And so they may have uh, questions that they try to pose to trip you up or or to make you angry, like Joan was saying. Uh, and it's, uh, you know, to be calm, cool, and collected and, and just respond as best you can. And, it, and there isn't anything wrong with saying, I don't know, I haven't thought about it that way. Uh, I'm gonna, uh, and I will get back to you. And that's why it's always good to go with a group of people for support so that you are organized you know your coalition like the coalition here our voices together um, we try to have a whole group of people go to give testimony around hb 109 hb 22 etc so that we're there for support for each other and if they suddenly amend the bill in the middle of the hearing which does happen which then, of course, impacts the testimony that you have so carefully crafted. Um, we have been known to go out in the hall and rewrite little segments of testimony to, you know, to 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 oppose the amendments that they just put in there. Um, but it, that's why you go with a group, because it's much easier, uh, and there's support, right. and you don't feel like you're getting attacked, and you can even turn and ask somebody for help if need be. Yeah, and another thing that they try uh, is when they make those changes, then they say, well, now that we've made those changes, would you be, would you support this bill? Uh, so they, they try and get you uh, to ac uh, not only acknowledge the change uh, that has occurred, but also to endorse it because of the change. And uh, it was, uh, 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 my experience with uh, the all the other people who are there testifying about HB 22 and HB 109 was that they say nope this bill needs to not go any further so we don't give in to uh, the uh, uh, small little changes that they make because the essence of these these bills still carries with it the chilling effect that it will have on peaceful protesting. And I think CJ mentioned earlier, we already have laws on the books that exist to handle these things. So this is just too much. Yep. And it's just like the voting, the voting things, trying to limit the the early voting hours and it's all to stifle democracy basically you know they're just trying to get people not to uh participate as, a, as in the democracy um not to vote early they they have certain people they don't want to participate yes and joan you might want to talk about what you just put in the chat please well, the fact that there are, I mean, of course, we've been working around the anti-voting or the anti-protest bills that are out there, but we now know that there are also two anti-voter bills in Ohio, one of which has a couple of things in it that are okay, but for the most part is pretty crappy. So, you know, you can say, oh, you know, we can ask for amendments or for that whole bill to go away. The other bill is a complete train wreck that limits early voting to a week, that cuts out mail-in absentee voting, that takes away drop boxes. I mean, it, it that requires state or, yeah, state picture ID copies of it to do absentee voting 
or copies that you have to bring with you. I mean, it is just an abomination. It sounds like it was written by the folk in Georgia on a bad day. And that <laughs> bill is now out there. It has not had a hearing yet. It's not even had proponent hearing yet. So we are watching that one carefully to see what happens as they come back into session this fall. But it is, uh, it's, it's a complete disaster. Is that uh, the one you're talking about that's a disaster? Is that House Bill 294? 294, yep. And what is the other bill? The other one is, um, crud, uh, I'll look it up. Is it a Senate bill or a House bill? It's a House bill. They're both House bills. Both House bills. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that, that, that limiting the early voting, that, that just makes me sad because I went down there as a peacekeeper during the early voting. It was a freezing cold night um, and they were lined up for two hours waiting to vote with their little kids. You know, a lot of them were, you know, they were working people who didn't have childcare, but were out there trying to vote. And, uh, it, and it's, it's such a difference in between Franklin County and Licking County because we didn't have these big lines, you know, because we're, it's just not fair. Uh, Lindsay is uh, asking about the best way to track, and you can actually sign up uh, to receive information from uh, the committees uh, or the bills that you're wanting to track. Uh, and Joan, I don't have that handy in front of me. Do you uh, have... Um, yeah. Actually, what it is, is um, you, you know which bills that you want to track, like let's say House Bill 109, which is uh, in, in government oversight uh, committee in the House, and you go on the website to the government oversight committee to I the think chair. It's the isn't it the criminal oh, justice? Oh, I'm pardoning. It's crim yeah. yeah, criminal justice, pardon me. Right. Government oversight is for the voting. Um, but you go to the committee chair's uh, website and you simply send a little email saying, I want to be put on the notification um, list for House Bill 109, House Bill 22, or you know, 294, um, depending on it. And I will show you what the uh, online, let's see if I can share this with you. Yeah, and uh, you you automatically get these notices uh, sent to you. I thought it it, it works actually pretty uh, pretty well, uh, and um, uh, I've i found it very helpful. So as soon as they publish the schedule for that committee, uh, then they have a list of the bills that they're going to consider and have testimony on it. And it tells you whether it's proponent testimony, sponsor testimony, opponent testimony, and the dates and the times uh, for those uh, testimonies. So it really does uh, keep you uh, in the loop. Uh, and um, um, I, I think it's, uh, it's, actually, <laughs> it's actually one of the better things at the General Assembly that they have concocted this, uh, this uh, procedure uh, that keeps uh, interested citizens uh, aware of what's going on. Yeah, so in, in the case of the Criminal Justice uh, House Committee, you uh, see that Jeff Luray is the chair, which is wonderful, and you want to contact. And then you're able we to contact. We don't see that, Joan. We, we you're not see seeing your... that. No, we just see your save screen right now. I put the League of Women okay. Voters um, link back in the chat because that also lists all the committees. And if you tap on that, it'll take you right to that little link where you can sign up for notifications from each mm -hmm. committee. Mm -hmm. And I, I feel like all the committees are important. So if you sign up to get notifications from all of them, you know, you won't miss the bills. There's a lot of committees. There, there's a lot of committees and really, I mean, the agricultural committee might not be something that you have a, a, a hunt in. And actually the committees want to know which, um, 
which bills you're interested in. So you can you can do that if you've got enough bandwidth to have all those emails come in. Yes, you know, I wanted to say real quickly, as long as you brought up the Agricultural Committee, there is a bill actually that's really True. bad and they want to take away regulations from fields and streams. True. And if you look into that, guys, that's a really important bill if you want to write opposition testimony. I'm not quite sure where that bill is right now, uh, but I know that that's in the Agricultural Committee. This is where it helps to be in, co in collaboration with other people because no one person can get this stuff by themselves. Seriously, there are too many committees. There are too many bills. Um, I, I, I want to show you how many there are in the house. Let's see if I can get this. Let's see if I can share this. Can you see that? The House no. of Representatives. <laughs> No, we just see no. your are all of us. Okay, well, that doesn't help any then. For some reason, it's not showing. Um, but probably because I'm various co hosts. But anyway, uh, there are 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, 27, 30 different committees in the House. Right. And yeah, and it's really, it's. Um, it can be so, very messy. So you want other people to talk to so you know what's important. So if you if you Google Ohio House of Representatives, uh, that will come up. And then over on the right at the top, you'll see my Ohio legislature. And if you click on that, you can create an account. And when you create that account, you can track legislation and committee activity. Uh, and uh, uh, you need a username and a password and you submit that and then um, uh, you can indicate uh, what bills that you're interested in. You can also indicate what committees you want to hear from. Uh, but if you go uh, and sign in or um, uh, uh, Google Ohio House of Representatives then, and click on my Ohio legislature, uh, then that happens. And the same thing is true for the uh, Ohio Senate. Um, Can you see so that now? I put it up there, the, the committee. Yeah, we, we see it. Yeah. And, yep, we uh, see it. Yep, good. That's what I was trying to show. Yeah. Yep, that's good. Yeah. But you can see why people interact with one another, form coalitions, organize together, talk together, and strategize, because otherwise it's just um, an, an unholy mess to try and keep track of all of this, especially when the amendments start flying, uh, because you don't want to go in and testify, you know, this wonderful testimony, but it's about something that they changed in the previous meeting. That doesn't help any either. So this is why we work with other people big time. So do we have any other um, comments? It's about time, I think, for us to end this. And Joan will send you the PowerPoint. Yeah. And I think Joan has a closing for us. Yes, I do. And I also would uh, suggest, too, that if you're doing your testimony for the first time and you want somebody, get somebody to read it through who's been there somebody who has done testimony before, just, just so you feel confident that what you have is something that is gonna make an impression on those folk as they sit there in their lovely little leather chairs and stare at you. Okay. It's always a good, always a good idea to look uh, to uh, some of the committee members who um, are sharing your view and that gives you a little bit of a boost that you you know you aren't fighting the entire committee. Uh, you have some allies uh, on the yeah. other side. They're they're supportive, and they'll actually give you tips on strategy if you call yeah. them in advance. Okay, that's right. Yeah. So, um, if we're any other questions or anything before I close this out, 
All righty. Um, this is a little quote from Dorothy Day. She said, the greatest challenge of the day is how to bring about a revolution of the heart, a revolution which has to start with each and every one of us right now. So thank you. Thank you so much for being willing to come out and hear this and for uh, being willing to testify, whether it be at redistricting or whether it be at a hearing, because this is how we get our voices heard. This is the main way we get our voices heard. And thank you. And thank you, David. Thank you, CJ. And we got to stop those anti-protest bills. Yes. <laughs>